Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody who joins us. My name is Olga Tamanov, and Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum continues its, its operation. It's day 357 of the full-scale invasion of, of the Russian aggressor in our land, and now we will be talking about the situation in the fuel market. I want to introduce our guest. It's Sergei Koyun, director at A95 Consulting Group. Good afternoon, Mr. Sergei. Good afternoon. So what are the changes we're seeing now? We're through winter almost. We're over, we've overcome the fuel crisis, in our opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. So what's the situation as of now? How ready are we to the spring we understand that traditionally winter is the moment the period of some reduction in demand for the fuel so how are we ready to the spring that there are sewing works are about to begin and so on good afternoon everybody first of all i will tell about the conditions we ended up in this season we may summarize uh, some results of the year and one of the most important results is that we were able to fully eliminate the threat of fuel deficit there was a critical situation i will remind you we've lost as of the beginning of the april last year we've lost the hundred percent of the sources of supply of the fuel and no country in this world ever faced a situation like that and no one in Europe or in the world believed that we would be able to renew the supply and we would be able to provide the army economy and the consumers with the fuel and after three months country was not even feeling well, not on the deficit, but there was prophecy of, of all the types of fuel in the market. We've built the new logistic chains for fuel supply. This new system is way more diversified, way more flexible, apart from the fact that those are the new countries that we supply fuel from. One of the last news is that we st started massive supplies of American diesel fuel they were started in January and the scale is growing in February and it emphasizes those revolutionary changes. No such fuel was ever present in Ukraine and now we're seeing it. Apart from that, there is fuel from India, Taiwan, Netherlands. It all tells us how diversified, how geographically diversified the supply network is and the logistics system changed dramatically. We were supplying the fuel with railway and sea and now uh, automobile transport accounts for 40% of supplies of fuel. Those are thousands of fuel tanks that uh, from the security vantage point they are impossible to catch is the flow that cannot be stopped you can bomb a fuel base you can bomb a fuel processing plant oil processing plant you can target a railway station but w the fleet of the fuel tanks grew Thrice at least the Ukrainians bought all the used fuel tanks that were available in Europe. So it's a revolutionary thing. And all that system, it passed the first exam in November and December when due to blackouts there was a, the explosive growth of use of generators. And thanks to the supply of fuel back then, we were through that period there was no deficit either of diesel fuel or gas and it allowed the private consumers and the businesses to go through this period and another good news is that last January the balance of the fuel market is larger than the previous year so we have more fuel in the market today than it was previous year when the consumption was bigger 
Yes, we have to say that due to the fall of economy, due to the loss of territories, the consumption fell. But now we, we have very good provisions of fuel and we move very confidently into this spring season. And why is it so? Because starting from October, the government initiated a dialogue with uh, about creation of such provisions because we uh, were understanding that the embargo of for import of Russian oil fuel to Europe would be implemented, and I may assume that Russians were promoting that information about the possible deficit that everything would stop. But we celebrated 5th of February in a very symbolic manner with the fall of prices at the gas stations. That was another phase of falling. And during January, the uh, prices for fuel were reduced like at least 4 or 5 hryvnias. And for the liquefied gas, it's 15%. And I'm seeing that in February, we still have potential for reduction of prices for at least two hryvnias per liter. Well, you mentioned embargo, that it did not influence our internal market. Was there uh, any impact felt by any other countries? Well, it did uh, influence us, both us and Europeans. We, we prepared ourselves. We are full with fuel and Europe is full of fuel. And the biggest chains they have more than 30 days provision, provisions of fuel and the supplies are still on, it keeps coming. So the, there are provisions for current consumption and there are supplies going on in normal, on normal scale. I would even say in some excessive amounts. What's going on in the world with the oil product prices? What are the trends? What dynamic do you observe? Well, before the embargo, which was implemented on the 5th of February, well, 5th of February, actually, it passed unnoticeable both for us and Europe. It was just a regular day, and now it's been 10 days, and no serious fluctuations that we could observe, no panic, no growth of prices. On contrary, we see the price being reduced. Everybody wants to sell their fuel. So actually embargo influenced the market in a very good way. Everybody imported a lot of fuel and everybody keeps calm and everybody uh, is confident about the future. Dear colleagues, if you have any questions? Well, about the sewing campaign. Well, yeah, we, we, we don't have questions. Well, the, 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 there was a topic announced about the sewing campaign and I'm being asked very frequently this uh, question about sewing and harvesting season is the uh, some r rudiment remnant from the past, from the Soviet era. We were fluctuating back then in spring and autumn because somehow unexpectedly everybody started understanding that they would sow something and then in the autumn the, it would be a harvesting season. But it, it's been more than 10 years that the factor of field works by the agrarians doesn't influence any influence any price changes because everybody understands that there will be more demand in spring and autumn. The only factor that influences it is the world price and I'm sure there will be no explosive growth of price due to some internal factors because there is enough fuel in Europe and let's go on. The agrarian sector we're having now is very different from what we used to have. Those are powerful agrarian holdings and those agrarian holdings, they worked very interesting last year when there was deficit and today they have some of the agrarian holdings, they have their own tankers and they import the fuel by themselves. 
I'm not even saying that they have provisions, the traders who sell it to them, they confirm it that the agrarians have a lot of fuel. And we were helped by those provisions that agrarians used to have. Government was concerned about that business when the oil bases were bombed, when the Kremenchuk oil processing plant was bombed, there were there were concerns but the agrarians were they had good provisions of fuel and it helped us pass this period very comfortably unfortunately uh, we have to recognize that many sowing areas are lost and we will need respectively less fuel than we used to need before uh, either so the territories are either lost or mined well those are the, the details but they are uh, unfit for use anyway those soils cannot be worked on due to a number of factors so we have a lot of fuel we have a lot of provisions including provisions of agrarians and the demand will be lower than always than usually and i'm seeing no risks no risks resulting from sowing campaign maybe we have questions on the floor i have a question could you tell us what are the countries that we import most of the fuel from well that that's probably it well we have to segregate where we supply fuel from and where we buy it from due to geographic specificities our biggest border is with Romania and Poland but it doesn't necessarily mean that we buy from those countries yes they are the biggest logistic ways of uh, supply but we don't have uh, Romanian manufactured or Polish manufactured fuel I don't think that we have any Romanian fuel at all so it means what I'm saying is that we use the territory of the of those countries to transport the fuel from the ports of those countries like uh, Constanza in Romania there are also ports in Bulgaria and in Poland in Poland they are the biggest and it's good news how we build this new market one of the companies one of the Ukrainian companies procured pretty big terminal in Poland last year and the scale of supply through the terminal keeps growing and it's a stable flow of fuel products that now already formulates the price but because what the access to the sea gives you it deprives it deprives the logisticians or the somebody who may set some speculative prices well we have to recognize no whether uh, no matter if anybody likes it or not we pay a lot of money to europeans for transportation uh, everybody makes a lot on us both port operators the transporters and traders well the prices fell substantially now comparing comparing to the summer when our consumption was on peak however those are really very good very big expenses we overpay about 100 dollars per ton it's about three hryvnias per liter and during the year that amount will be equal to more than one billion dollars so we are dependent on that fuel we need that fuel and uh, in case of such infrastructure projects when our companies buy our fleet of uh, tanks when we buy our companies buy terminals it it provides uh, it ensures better price for us and i think that the government should ponder over like yeah we found new sources of supply we're we ensured the supply of fuel but that fuel is very expensive and we have to think how to reduce the prices for 
the economy f f because we are the country who is in war we cannot pay that much for the fuel and there were news today uh, about Uker Transnafta who procured some big amount of fuel in Hungary at some fantastically high price first of all it's expensive second we buy that fuel from Orban in fact do we really need it don't we have any other sources of supply but we, we can buy from them but we have all the opportunities to buy cheaper because the the, the oil is being supplied to Hungary through our territory and in fact we allow them to make money on Russian oil so talking about this cooperation with Hungarians we have to do it on some mutually beneficial conditions okay we're, we're buying it from European Union but again we we may pose questions about uh, buying w without that added value existing in the market today i appreciate that information you provided and we hope that by summer those volumes that we need will grow because we will liberate the temporarily occupied territories dear colleagues i'm reminding you joining us was sergey koyun the director of a95 consulting group and the next briefing will be at 13 o'clock joining us will be natalia sad spokeswoman of the ukrabaran prom state concern and we will talk about cooperation with international partners bear with us and trust in our armed forces glory to ukraine thank you